Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega Saturn games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for this video, we're already going to need to have both dev mode and retroarch already set up and installed on our Xbox Series S or our Xbox Series X. That's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. You can go refer to that first, then come back here and I'll be showing you specifically how to set up Sega Saturn games. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is mapping and network drive. As for this video, we're going to need to transfer some files to the internal storage on our Xbox. Now, if you watch my most up-to-date installed video for RetroArch, you'll already have this done. Although if you already have RetroArch installed from a previous video and you don't currently have a map network drive set up, what we're going to be doing is doing that step next. If you already have this done, you can feel free to skip this step. I'll be talking about games and BIOS files a little bit later. Now, I will mention for this map network drive, if you have already watched my most up-to-date video of setting up RetroArch, I did show how to do that there. Although if you didn't set that up previously, Obviously, I will be showing it step by step. You can feel free to skip this step and just jump over to transferring files over. So the first thing again we need to do is open up our Xbox device portal. This of course can be found on the dashboard of our dev mode. You can find this access portal and we're going to need to open this up in any browser that you want. From this point what we're going to be doing is coming to our left bar right here. We're going to be clicking on file explorer and this is going to open up the file explorer section. Once we're here we're going to be coming to the top right and we're going to be clicking on this browse option right here. This is going to open up a pop-up that's going to allow us to access remotely some files on our Xbox and access the internal storage on our Xbox. So to do this, what we need to do is copy this URL here at the very top. We can highlight it, we can right click and we can click copy. And we're going to be opening up a file explorer on our Windows. We're going to be clicking on the URL path right here. We're going to be pasting in the URL that we just got. And we're going to be clicking enter to enter here. Now, if this is your first time doing this, it may ask you for a username and password. All of this information is also stored here. So you can simply copy all of this for your username and password. Now this can get a little bit annoying as every time you want to get back here, you will need to manually enter this URL. You'll need to manually enter the password and you'll need to manually enter the username. So instead, what we're going to be doing is two things. The first thing we're going to be doing is opening up our command prompt and we're going to be automatically saving this password and username. So we no longer have to enter it manually again. To do this again, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be copying the CMD key here at the bottom. We're simply going to highlight it. We're going to right click and we're going to be clicking copy. From this point, we're going to be opening up CMD in Windows. To do this, we're going to be coming down to the bottom left. We're going to be clicking on our search bar and we're going to be searching for CMD. And we're going to be looking for the command prompt right here. We're going to left click to open this up and our command prompt should open. Once this is open, all we need to do is right click here. It will automatically paste everything we have. We simply click enter and then we should get this result here, credential added successfully. And that basically attaches this username and password to our windows. So it'll automatically remember it every time. From this point, we have made it a lot easier. However, now from this point, you still need to know this URL every time you want to actually access the remote files. So what we're gonna be doing is one extra step. This is optional, but we're gonna be setting up a mapped network drive. So it'll actually be saved in our windows so we can easily get back here whenever we want. What we're gonna be doing again is again, copying this file path. We're gonna be opening up another file browser in windows and we're gonna be clicking on this PC right here. And then here at the very top, we should have this option map network drive. We can left click to open this. And here we're gonna be able to enter a new drive that will automatically store this location. And since we've already saved the username and password in windows, it means we'll really easily be able to access back here whenever we want. So the first thing you need to do is assign a drive letter. So you can choose whatever you want here. So I've already done this to my Z drive, but you can attach it to another drive, for example, Y or any other available letter here in your windows. We can then enter our folder location. So here you can just control V again to paste in the folder location that you've set up previously. You can then enable automatic reconnect and sign in. I'm going to be disabling this, but you can feel free to enable this and you can connect using different credentials, although we're not going to be doing that in today's video. Once you're happy with everything here, we can click finish and then you will have a new map network drive that will show up here like this. It'll mention development files. It will then show the URL to your Xbox and now clicking this will open this up very easily. So we no longer have to locate back here manually. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up the Windows apps folder and here we should see all the currently installed apps on our Xbox. So at the top here, we have my files explorer underneath this. And I have two folders named platinum Fox and they have retro arch mentioned in the title. This is my retro arch folder. Although depending on the version you're using, it may be named slightly different, 
but there will be two folders here. Previously, this folder started with 1E4C, although this can depend widely depending on the version you're using and depending on if it's a nightly or not, so I really don't know what to expect here. But you're going to be looking for some folder named RetroArch or something like 1E4C. Once you've located this folder, we're going to be looking for the second one on the list. It'll typically be a much larger folder. As you can see, this is around 1.4 gigabytes and the other one is around 3.5 kilobytes. We're going to be opening up this second folder and here we should see all of our default installed RetroArch content. What we're going to be doing from this point is creating a new folder here that's going to store our BIOS files or a brand new system folder or creating a brand new system BIOS folder so we can access and transfer all the BIOS files we need for our emulators over here or for today's video specifically the GBA emulator. What we need to do is right click here. We're going to be creating a new folder and I'm going to be naming it system. And this is going to be our new system or BIOS folder for RetroArch. After this, we're going to be heading over to RetroArch and we're going to be manually mapping this. So RetroArch knows to point here instead. While we're here, we can also add a couple of extra folders. We can add a saves folder. We can add a save state folder. We can add a config folder and we can even add a games folder. Here you can pick and choose all the different files that you will access regularly from RetroArch and we can remap them so RetroArch will look here instead of on the internal Xbox storage that we cannot actually access any other way. Doing this method, we will easily be able to access this. We can make backups, we can make copies. So this is definitely a method I'd recommend doing it. But for today's video, the only one that is necessary is creating a system folder. Although you can feel free to make any of the other folders here as well that you like, but it is totally optional. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching RetroArch from here and we're going to be brought up to our RetroArch UI. From here, we're going to be coming to the left. We're going to be coming to settings and now we're going to be scrolling down until we see directory. And here we can see the directory for all the different assets inside RetroArch. So the first thing we're going to be looking for is the BIOS and system file, as you can see right here. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. Once this opens up, we're going to be scrolling down until we see the S drive. We're going to be clicking the A button. We're going to be scrolling down to program files. We're going to be coming to Windows apps and then we're going to be looking for our RetroArch folder, the same one that we've seen on our computer. So for me, it's Platinum Fox. I'm going to be looking for the second folder. And here I'm going to be looking for my system folder. I'm going to be clicking use this directory. And now what we've done is we have remapped this directory to our system folder on our mapped network drive. So RetroArch will now search there for our BIOS files instead of the default location. So from this point, you can feel free to update any of the other files you want. I'm going to be doing my config file, my save file, and a couple of the other ones. From this point, once you have everything mapped, we're simply going to be clicking the B button to come back out of here. We're then going to be coming to our main menu and we're going to be coming to our configuration file. And we're going to be saving our current config just so all of these extra changes are in RetroArch. So this video is brought to you by me. Today, I'm going to be sponsoring my own video at my new merch line. This is going to be the first t-shirt I'm going to be launching for the channel. It's a very nice quality print that you can get from Teespring. Everything is linked right below the video here and all videos on my channel. It comes in a number of different colors. You can get it in a hoodie, different women's style t-shirts, stickers. It'll definitely support the channel if you can check it out and I'd really appreciate it. Let's jump right into the video. So once you have everything set up, we're going to be coming to our RetroArch folder. We're going to be coming to our system folder. And here we're going to be adding some BIOS files for our Sega Saturn. Now I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download any BIOS files. You're going to have to find and download your own BIOS files or feel free to create a dump or backup of any of your existing Sega BIOS. What we're going to be looking for is a Sega Saturn BIOS in a .bin format, and it needs to be named exactly like this mpr-17933.bin needs to be named exactly like this for our Sega Saturn. I'll be leaving some more information and documentation linked on this in the description down below, but we need to have a BIOS file exactly set up like this. What we're going to be doing is simply dragging and dropping this into our BIOS system folder on our RetroArch, and just like that, we have this set up here. The next thing we're going to be discussing are games, and I will also mention for today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download games. Again, you can feel free to create a dump or backup of your own games or find any download links you want, but I will not be sharing any download links for this. Now, when you download your games, they will most likely come in a .7-zip or a .rare format. I would recommend first extracting these before playing them in RetroArch, although I do believe RetroArch is capable of playing .7-zip and .rare formats, but this can affect loading times, and I think it's just better if you extract them first. So to extract games in a .rare or .7-zip format, we are going to need WinRare or 7-zip for this. I already have 7-zip installed, but I'll leave both of these linked in the description down below. Feel free to download whichever one you want. What you need to do is come to your file. We're going to be right-clicking. If you're on Windows 11 like me, we need to click Show More Options. 
then we will get this pop-up here. We can hover over 7-zip and we can simply click extract files or we can click extract here, extract here for our current location and extract files to select location to an extract. So for me, I already have my files extracted in the Castlevania folder right here. And this is typically how your game setup will look like. You'll most likely have a .iso file, you will have a .q file and you may have multiple .mp3 files. This is where Sega Saturn becomes a little bit tricky. It is possible to load them off an external drive, but due to the external drive, RetroArch and dev mode, sometimes these extra MP3 files will not also be imported. So it might cause some issues and you might be missing some music. So it is recommended to put any games on the internal storage on your Xbox and load them from there just to avoid issues so it can easily link to these extra files. So what we're gonna be doing is bringing these extra game files over to our Xbox. So we're gonna be coming back to our Xbox folder. We're gonna be coming to my games folder that I made previously. You can put them wherever you want on this drive. And I'm gonna be creating a new folder here called Sega Saturn. And here I've just created a new folder. What I'm gonna be doing is dragging and dropping my full Castlevania Symphony of the Light folder right here into this location. And I'm gonna be transferring this entire game file over to my Xbox. From this point, I'm simply gonna be letting this transfer. Once this is finished, we're gonna be heading over to our Xbox. We're gonna be setting up the final things and loading our games there, and we're gonna be continuing from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. So from this point, once you're over on your Xbox, we're simply going to be launching RetroArch. Once RetroArch is launched, we're going to be coming to our main menu. We're going to be coming to Load Core. And here we're going to be scrolling down until we see Sega. And here we're going to be looking for Sega Saturn and in brackets Yabos. Now here we do have a couple of options for Sega Saturn cores. We also have Yabashir Nero, Beetle Saturn, and we have Kronos. So depending on what you want to do, you can feel free to try out these other ones. They might have some slightly different BIOS and system setups. I will be leaving some extra documentation linked in the description down below, as I mentioned earlier. But for today's video, we have everything set up specifically for Yabos. So for today's video, we're simply going to be clicking A on the Yabos folder. From this point, we're going to be coming down to load content. And here we're going to have to locate to where our games are. So if you're loading them from an external drive, they will be located on your E drive. And here you can just locate to wherever your games are set up here. Otherwise, we're going to be scrolling down to our S folder. We're going to be clicking this open. We're going to be coming down to program files. We're going to be coming down to Windows apps. And here we're going to be looking for our second RetroArch folder, as mentioned before. And here we can locate to everything that we have here. Now, a couple of users in the past have mentioned they are having some issues with the S folder that games do not show up here. And sometimes they show up inside the D folder inside here under development files, Windows apps, and again, inside our RetroArch folder right here. I would try to avoid using the D folder as much as possible as it can actually brick your dev mode and RetroArch and require you to fully reinstall everything. So that's something to keep in mind. But just be careful when actually trying to do this. If you are having issues with your S drive, I would recommend just resetting up your whole dev mode on your Xbox to try to get everything set up again, as this is where everything should show up normally. So I'm going to be going back to my S drive. Again, I'm going to be going to my program files, Windows apps. I'm going to be coming to my RetroArch folder, coming to my games folder. And here I'm going to be coming to my Sega Saturn. I have Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And here you can select your ISO file that we had set up previously. From this point, we're going to be clicking A to select our current core. Multiple cores show up here as you have multiple cores in RetroArch that can read a .iso format. Simply click the A button here. And just like that, in a couple of seconds, our game will start to load up. Now, depending on how large your game is, this can take a couple of seconds, or especially if you're loading from an external drive, it can take quite some time. However, if it's on the internal storage, it should load up really quick. And just like that, we're loading up and we're playing Sega Saturn games on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. From this point, we're going to be opening up our on-screen menu using the menu combination that we set up previously. For me, it's down and select. And here we have our on-screen menu. What we're going to be doing from this point is scrolling down here until we see the options tab. And here we're going to have a couple of different options for our Sega Saturn BIOS. So here, the first thing we can do is enable frame skipping. We can force a HLE BIOS. This does require a restart. We can set up the add-on cartridge for any games that need that. And we actually have the one meg and the four meg of RAM. So depending on the games that you're trying to play, you may need to set this up. We can set up the six player adapter for ports one and two. You can feel free to enable both of these. And then finally, you can adjust the number of treads you want to allocate to this. So on the Xbox, we do have eight cores and 16 treads. So we can do up to 16 here. However, I wouldn't recommend playing with this too much as it can actually affect the performance of the games, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. So I want to experiment with this to get your desired effect. And again, a restart is required for this as well. The last thing I'd recommend doing is creating a game playlist. It's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video, but it can make your RetroArch experience a lot better. I would definitely recommend doing it, especially if you're playing a lot of different games and a lot of different consoles. I'll be leaving a card on screen and a link in the description down below to my previous video where I show you step by step how to set that up. 
Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play Sega Saturn games on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. From this point, I want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly and Joshua Davis. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button underneath any video on the channel, it would really help me out. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play Sega Saturn games on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a super thanks in this video, it really helped me out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, until next time as always, keep it saucy, peace.